It is an honor to be here with you guys. You are doing something that I really value. You're making the internet a place that I don't mind going. You might be able to tell by the color of my hair that there was no internet when I went shopping when I was growing up. <laughs> And you're making it a place I don't mind being. I imagine that you are amazing at convergent thinking, at making choices, at evaluating, at implementing. And that's why your work is so powerful. So why am I here? And why the heck would I be here to take you out of your comfort zone for a visit, even a virtual visit of Improv World? Well, here's why. Because improvisation brilliantly models divergent thinking. And this morning, I just want to let you guys know, this is, this is actually for Ian. This morning, I, um, I looked through my slides before I came here, and my opening slide, instead of being a big picture of me, said something like, now for the fun. So I'm really glad I'm not promising you fun. <laughs> I, I, I am going to promise you an opportunity to commit to something. So what we're gonna do, in order for you to build your toolkit for divergent thinking, in order for you to perhaps develop a couple of new skills that will come in handy when doing the same thing that you've been doing, when doing the same thing that you are brilliant at, when doing the same thing becomes calcified and you're ready to move on to something new. Who has ever been there before? Any grown-ups in the room who've ever need to break out of your comfort zone? No? Okay, there we go. <laughs> awesome, a couple more hands moving. Thank you, then I am in the right place. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're going to take a trip to Improv World. So how do you get to Improv World? Well, here's the deal. It's all around you. You just don't live there much if what you're doing is being analytical and, and making decisions and implementing those decisions. But you all know when you can go there. You've been there before, I'm guessing. And here's all it takes. I'd like you to stop tweeting, uh, stop knitting, put down, empty your hands. You don't need to take notes. This is gonna be in next year's iPad app, so you'll get this. If you would, empty your hands. Let me see them empty. Let's see a shaking of hands. Amazing, great. And what I'd like to ask you to do now is empty your lap if you're in the, in the bleachers and set your stuff down. Uh, if you're in the front, just stand up, step away from the table and push your chair in so there's a little space around you. Those of you in the bleachers, stand up. Now let me see your hands, and let me see your foot, and let me see you wiggle just a little bit. One of the things about Improv World is it takes, it takes a commitment, and it takes a, it takes a little bit of a movement. It, we get there more quickly if we move. So in order for us to go to Improv World, here's the deal. You're going to look around you for a moment. Just go ahead and turn around. Back row, don't stare at the back wall. If you would, just turn around. <laughs> And look at these faces. There's a couple pa faces of people. Thank you, lights. They're magic. There are a couple of faces of people here that you have spoken with. Am I right? Let me hear. No, 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 no. If you've spoken with someone. Great. And there are some strangers even near you. Let me hear. Uh, 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 if there are strangers near you. So, oh, 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 I see somebody doing this. How many of you feel really comfortable with your arms locked? Whether or not I'm comfortable, how does it look if my arms are locked? closed off. So I'd like you to open your arms. Oh my God, that's scary. Turn to your partner. Just pick somebody. And this is a one-on-one -on -one activity. They could be behind you. They could be in front of you. They could be right beside you. I would prefer that it's not your boss. It would be better if it's not your best friend. It would be better if it's not someone you came here with. You're going to find a partner because we're going to do an activity that is one-to-one. -one. If you can hear my bell, stop talking. If you're listening to me, put your hand in the air. Great, that's the technology that I'm gonna use to get you to stop talking. Just so you know, very hot tech. I sound like a bicycle. I sound like Amsterdam. <laughs> All right, so here's the next step. Who does not have his partner or her partner? This is one-on-one -on -one and you all gotta do it. So if you don't have a partner, you don't have a partner, sir? Well, come up here with me. Hi, what is your name? 
Paul, you can use the stairs. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't need them. Yeah, so he's tall enough to just step up here. Great. Um, I didn't warn them, but Brian, Jason, somebody, I'm going to need a handheld. Unless you want to just talk into my face. Right? <laughs> okay, so if you don't have a partner, I'm not going to punish anyone else. Just Paul. Hi, Paul. Thank you for coming up here. But if you don't have a partner, um, walk toward the aisle and there will be somebody there for you. Try this. This is great. Put your hands up and raise your eyebrows and somebody will pick you. So walk toward the aisle and there will be a partner waiting for you. Walk toward me. Seriously. Because everybody needs a partner. This does not work in a threesome. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Oh, okay. I'll let you. Great. All right. So our first, who does not have a partner? Great. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Who doesn't have a partner? This beautiful woman needs you. Oh no, you've got somebody. Oh, this tall, young, geeky young man needs you. <laughs> come out here. We'll find you someone. Actually, you could be Paul's partner when I'm done manipulating him. Oh, good. Come here. Come here. Come here. There's a, there's a woman waiting for you in the, in the aisle. Who's, who needs somebody? Great. Oh, right behind you over there. Who needs somebody? Yeah, good. Walk toward an aisle. Follow my instructions. Walk toward an aisle, you'll find a partner. Jesse will work with somebody. That'd be fun. <laughs> He's done this before. All right, thank you. That took longer than I thought. Getting geeks to move, challenging. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I'll try not to call you geeks again. All right, so we're already in the, the first neighborhood, by the way, of Improv World. And that neighborhood is very common to a lot of you. It is the neighborhood of fear. And you can always tell, who's, who's felt some trepidation when I asked you to stand up? Who had a little heart rate change when I asked you to find a partner? <laughs> it's great to know you're normal human beings. If you don't feel these things, you might be a sociopath. <laughs> I'm serious. Improvisers on stage, the clowns, the fools, they do not pick the people who want to be picked. Pick me! Avoid them. <laughs> Swear to God. All right, so you know, you can recognize the tourists in improv world. How are you doing, Paul? Good. Okay, great. You can recognize the tourists in improv world because they experience some anxiety. So you're, you're a tourist right now. They put themselves under pressure to be brilliant. Are you expecting any of that right now? That I, I'm going to make you be brilliant up here? Oh, good. He's, he's already a, a fool. It's lovely. They, <laughs> they avoid taking risks. Like, I won't go on stage, or I won't speak up, or I don't have a partner, but I'm just going to stand here, and she'll leave me alone. <laughs> uh, and they anticipate embarrassment. Am I right? These are the tourists in improv world. So how do you recognize the natives? They breathe. Everybody take a deep breath. Seriously, into your belly. Sigh it out. <sighs> Step number one toward not looking like a tourist. The natives also accept reality. They're not going to sing about fun. They're just going to put away their toys. We accept reality. We do what needs to be done when we're natives of improv world. Denying reality doesn't help make it fun. Thank you, Ian. That was awesome. <laughs> the, another thing is that they celebrate failure, and this is so counterintuitive. I'll teach you more about it in a minute. And they let go, and they don't take things personally. So this can defray that whole embarrassment thing. We're going to play a game together. The reason I had you have, find a partner, come here, come here, come here. Test it. Say testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, do you know how to speak? T count to three? You just did. One, two, three. Great. We're going to play a game. It's called one, two, three. Some of you may have done this before. It's fun the second time around. So even if you've done it, great ballet dancers still do plie. So here we go. Uh, we're going to count together. One, two, three. One, two, three. Got one, it? One, two, three. You say one. I say two. Like that. Okay. Say one. You want to start? One. Two. Three. One. One. Wait. Oh. <laughs> it's more challenging than it looks, You've isn't it? You've done this before. How about that? Okay. Thank you. That was so, brilliant. So st stay, stay with me or, or we'll find you a partner. Anybody want to confess you still don't? Oh, go, go play with Jesse. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. Go play with Jesse. Okay, he doesn't seem to have a partner. All right. So everybody, what I'd like you to do is face your partner, look in their eye, make eye contact. <laughs> and alternating between you count. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And go until I ring the bell.
right, I'm, I'm in these I'm situations with brilliant people like you guys sometimes where this is really easy. Did any of you find this incredibly easy? Yeah, there's always a couple of you. We're going to screw with your brain in a minute. Seriously. How many of you fa found this more challenging than you would expect? So if it's really easy for you, next, the next go round, try a different language. Uno, dos, tres, or... And the trois, So try a different language and see how it goes. Sound good? Uh, and yeah, okay, I won't go further than that. So what I'd like you to do is make eye contact with your partner, say thank you. Turn your back, find a new partner. This is only going to take 10 seconds. There'll be no talking. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you're still looking, do it without talking. This is a technology for finding your partner. Go like this, eyebrows and hands. So find a new partner. Good, walk toward the aisle, they'll find you. Oh, great. So here's the next step, guys. The next step is this. Oh yeah, come toward us. There's somebody behind you who needs a partner. You in the stripes. That, there's a woman back there who needs somebody? Yeah, come here. Okay, good. So here's the next step. If and when you mess up, you mess up doing this, right? One, two, three, one, wait, what, wait, what, what, one, what, what? Who had that experience? Okay, who twinged and when I should be able to do this when you had that experience? So this is where that celebrating failure thing comes in. What we're gonna do is take a breath. Let me hear you take a breath and sigh it out. <sighs> so what, when you mess up, Rather than holding on to it and judging yourself and going, but I have a PhD, damn it. Here's what I'd like you to do. <coughs> Try this. <clears throat> Take a breath. Did it? Yes. Take a breath. Lift your arms in the air and go, woohoo! <laughs> and guys, it's elbows over armpits. <laughs> this is not don't shoot. This is a moment of celebration, and if you've seen AD, Amy Cuddy's TED Talk about power positions, then you know that taking power positions fills us with good hormones and is strengthening to our egos and gives us confidence. So what I'd like you to do is when you mess up, throw your arms in the air and go, woohoo, can I hear it? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, lots of movement, brilliant. Okay, good. So here's the next step though. Not only are you gonna woohoo for you, you're gonna woohoo for your partner when they mess up. <laughs> This is in that second circle that Fawn showed us where you're tending, befriending, and you're building a shared story as well. Okay, so a shared past story, but you're building it right now. So the other thing you're gonna do is replace the word one with a snap or a click of your fingers. If you can't do it, just go like that. It'll be so noisy, nobody will know. So, <laughs> but don't, please don't clap in place. Just do this, one hand, got it? Great, look at your partner, it's snap two, three, snap two, three. When you mess up, fail. Action. tree pose, if you can hear me fly like a seagull. How many people failed more? Great. Stay with your same partner. It's burning time to find new ones. If you would, replace one with snap, replace two with a clap of your hands, both hands together. Replace three with a stomp. When you mess up, throw your arms in the air and go woohoo. Go! Action!
<laughs> this is kind of a fun game that even grown-ups will play, and it's easy to make it more and more complex. Therefore, it's easy to practice failing, and it's easy to practice failing good-naturedly. In a way, it's not the game that matters, although I like that it gets you on your feet and you're making noise, and I think that's good for us. <laughs> it oxygenates the blood and gets the, gets the blood back in your thighs. Okay, so here's the thing that's important, though, is that we are practicing celebrating failure. And you're moving toward looking less like a tourist in improv world because you're breathing. You're accepting reality. You mess up. You, you're not covering for it. You're just going, wah! And that's really good for improv world. You're celebrating failure. You're letting go and you're not taking things personally. If you mess up... Right? We could practice that too. Wait, you've been practicing that your whole life. If we went one, two, and if you mess up, I have you go, oh, or even worse, oh, I'm such a loser, which is a horrible thing that those of us who are around in the 80s may remember doing. Remember that? Using that language? It's just not healthy. I'm glad we've sort of moved out of that culturally. So we're already on our way toward not looking like a tourist in an improv world, you're basically practicing facing your fear. And this isn't jumping out of an airplane or will I get the job or will she say yes when I propose or will my baby have all its fingers and toes fear. That's part of why we can practice woohoo here. When your client's horribly disappointed in the website that you've designed, not such a good time to go woohoo. <laughs> Take it from me. We're going to go to the next neighborhood of improv world. If you would, 10 seconds nonverbal, find a new partner. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ah! If, you, if you can hear my voice, put your hand up. If you can hear my voice, put your other hand up. If you can hear my voice, pat your head. If you can hear my voice and you don't have a partner, wave your arms madly. Great, look around you, there's people waving. They're looking for you. So if you need a partner, you need a partner? Good news, you can play with a threesome with this activity. All right, and I need two volunteers to come play with me. Who are my volunteers? Is it you two? I knew it, come on up. I could tell by your proximity to the stage. <laughs> Let's have a hand for Matthew and for Matthew. Hey. What is your name? Anne. This is Anne. This is Matthew. We're coming right out where it's light. Okay, you guys are so fearless to come out here to volunteer. I asked them to come up. What, what am I saying? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next neighborhood of improv world. And the next neighborhood of improv world is the neighborhood of change. It's very counterintuitive to let yourself be changed, to change yourself. We spend lifetimes trying to remain the same. Does this resonate for anyone? Ever tried to to encourage someone else to change something about the way that they live? Yeah? <laughs> Hard to do. They have a lot of defenses. So here, here's, part, here's what we're going we're gonna, to uh, do is recognize what the tourists in the neighborhood of change look like. They try to stay the same. They keep things safe and familiar. They expect and they even demand that others adapt and change in order to suit them. I know her. Do you, anybody know her, that person? <laughs> I've been that person. They fight for control. Oops, back up. Okay, yeah, and this is what, this is what people look like it, that are natives in the neighborhood of change. They listen. They accept. They add. They adapt. They go into the unknown. They try things that will please their neighbors rather than themselves, and they share control. And to do this, we're going to create a shared memory Fawn, thank you for past stories, shared past stories. Here we go. You guys are going to play a game with me. These, this is for you. It's a, it's, it's a little button that says yes and, because if you've ever done improvisation before, the, the term yes and is familiar to you. Say yes and if, if, that's, if you've heard it before. Yes. Yeah, this is a familiar, familiar term. It's the piece of improvisation that's made its way in the world. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make up a memory. We're going to completely make this up. And, and the way we're going to do it is, is using yes and. So we'll, we'll pretend that at some point in our lives, we three went somewhere. 
we had an adventure. We're going to remember it one sentence at a time. So the first person is going to say, remember and name a place. And the next person says, yes, and remember and something you did there. And the next person says, yes, and remember something you did there. And it's yes and. It's not yes and, but no. <laughs> so have either of you, is there some place in the world you'd like to go that you haven't been? Let's ask, ask Matthew. Sure, Rome. Rome, let's go to Rome. Okay, so let's go closer to the edge of the stage. This is the fear zone. Oh, we're back in fear. We can live here. Okay, and let's look at each other because there's always support in your partner's eyes. Okay, so remember. Work? Yeah, can you guys share that a little bit? Okay, good. So remember Rome. So say yes and. I, oh, so I just go, remember, remember Rome? No, uh, I, I say, remember Rome, and then you say yes and. Re yes and, we want to do that protest where we're all on unicycles, but nobody knew how to ride one. Great, yes and. <laughs> And we rode those Say yes and. Yes and. We rode those unicycles to the Coliseum. Yes, and we taught a giant unicycle workshop inside of the Coliseum. Yes. And yes, yes and, it was the worst workshop ever because we didn't know how to ride unicycles. Great. So yes and that. Yes. And we got some experts to come help us. Ah, yes! And uh, we became friends with them, and after the big protest, we all went out together. Uh, yes, and we got Froyo, because everybody loves Froyo. Yes. <laughs> Great. We're going to stop there. We'll finish our story later. <laughs> Give him a hand. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so if you would, with your partner, make up a shared memory. One of you just take a leap. Remember Bali? Remember Australia? Remember Brazil? Remember Amsterdam? Action. That's yours. Okay, if you would, thank your partner and go sit down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In playing this game, you are, you're listening, you're accepting, you're adding, you're adapting, and now, if you practice this, you're going to get so that you can listen and adapt. You can go into the unknown. How many of you, when your partner said something, you weren't expecting it at all? You say yes and, and you go there. This is divergent thinking at its best. You try things that will please your partner, please your coworkers, please your, your significant other, rather than making them do the stuff you want to do. And you're sharing control, literally, one and then the other of you. I've got about five more minutes of my presentation. Are you guys okay with staying five more minutes? I'm the only thing between you and lunch. Is that okay, guys? Conference people, okay, great, thank you. All right, so here's the thing. The next region of improv world is the fourth dimension, and we all know the fourth dimension is time. Time. Time is money, in this case, time is lunch. So I have an exercise for you. In a moment, I'm gonna show you a slide. And on this slide are some of the things that I've mentioned about how not to look like a tourist when you go to Improv World, how to look like a native in Improv World. And what I'd like you to do is, with somebody who's next to you, I'm gonna give you about one minute and 50 seconds in order to discuss the slide, go through the points, and surface the trick sentence that is not one of the things I said in my talk. So this is a trick, you got it? One of the things on the slide is not in my talk, and you're gonna discuss. Got it? One minute, 52 seconds, and let the discussion begin now.
time. Who thinks they know what I did not say as part of the talk? Oh, of course, a B, brilliant. Who said that from over there? Put your hand up. Would, would you come up after the first person who said B, brilliant, and I'll give you one of these? So, okay, good. So here's the thing, guys. It's, it's kind of like, um, oh, God, who's that little Muppet guy in Star Wars? What's his name? Thank you, Yoda. <laughs> it's kind of like Yoda says, there is no try, there is only do. If you try to be brilliant, it might look something like this. <laughs> Trying to be brilliant is like saying don't be yourself. But if you do all these other things, brilliance will happen. So don't try. It just happens when you allow it. If you're listening to your partner, if I am working to please my improv partner when I'm on stage and trying to give them what delights them, I'm thinking outside of my own box without trying to be brilliant. Do you get that? If you can follow me. Okay, great. So, <laughs> so by practicing these, these couple of games, then you are going to become better and better at divergent thinking. Uh-oh, I've got the wrong... Uh, oh, hip, okay, a brilliant thinker. So that you won't look like an improv world tourist when you're in improv world. I've been there. I've been in brainstorming meetings where I was just going, everybody just came with a bunch of ideas and they're just spouting them out. I'll just stand here. <laughs> the tourist in improv world is afraid to take risks rather than that. You will leap into the unknown. You will be a native of improv world. And some of you are taking our improvisation workshop that Bats Improv is offering here on Thursday and will give you dozens of more improvisational activities. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> All right, so thank you for the five extra minutes. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you.